Blocksburg is a blockchain platform specifically aimed at scientists and researchers. The Frankfurt School Blockchain Center recently joined Blocksburg, and today I am joined by Philip Sunlight of the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center. Philip, what exactly is Blocksburg? Thanks. Well, Blocksburg is a consortium for research institutions and um, universities who are jointly maintaining a DLT network to think about how, how research will be done in the future. And what is the role of the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center and the reason to join? Well, the idea is that we uh, contribute to this joint DLT network. We also maintain a node in this network because we would like to experiment uh, with us being participating in a network to basically help provide consensus. And of course, because it's a network of research institutions and universities, we are also investigating how research potentially will be done in the future. This, for example, means that data could potentially be stored uh, or timestamped with a DLT network such that data can be proved, such that analysis and investigations can be proved, and most important, such that uh, these uh, analyses um, potentially can also be replicated by others. This would then avoid um, erroneous studies. Okay. Blockchain is a consortium that is truly global. It is uh, initiated by the Max Planck uh, Society, but has research centers all over the globe. I know research before has been often a thing only in the institutions. How can blockchain help make data accessible and trustworthy for researchers all around the world? Yes, exactly. That's the key point here. Research right now, worldwide in multiple dimensions, be it economics or pharmaceuticals, chemistry or mechanics works always in silos. So right now you typically have these silos. So you have one researcher or one research group who is gathering the data. This researcher is also doing the analysis. This researcher is writing the manuscript. It's then also publishing this article in the um, in the magazines or in the journals. And this then leads to the fact that you have these silos which become very intransparent because other research cannot investigate what happened with the data, how the data have been um, turned around, how data has been potentially aggregated, how the statistical analysis, for example, have been done. This is mostly intransparent in uh, to other people than the people who are really doing the research themselves. And this then also leads to um, yeah, sometimes uh, error in the studies, sometimes even fraud, um, and sometimes a lacking in transparency such that specific research results are in not credible enough such that they could be believed. So in other words, right now, you have to have a high degree of trust into the research institutions, into the researchers who are actually performing um, the data analysis, the gathering of the data, and also writing everything down in the publications. You have to really trust uh, these researchers uh, very strongly um, and um, therefore in a blockchain-based world in the future might take five years or ten years from now on in the future you might have um, data publicly stored somewhere timestamped on DLT platform such that other researchers can also take this data and replicate it and replicate the, the studies uh, to really check whether the outcome of the analysis is really the same or whether there might be happened some errors uh, when doing the research. Okay, it's very interesting. Now you have, I think, talked about three potential use cases and I think two are very real already at this moment. First, giving more credibility to the research results as they are more transparent and researchers all around the world can look into the research performed and validated, as well as the timestamps, which is, I think, really important as well, because now um, scientists and researchers can really clearly prove whenever they came up with data, with an hypothesis, with an idea, which will make research easier in the future as well. What are other things you touched on decentralization? Um, things further in the future, how can blockchain help research um, and maybe research projects in the future? Yeah, that's also a good question. So right now, for example, money for research, say pharmaceuticals, biology and so on, money comes typically from governments or from public grants. 
then this money is provided to intermediaries. Yeah, P uh, people are taking this money and routing it uh, towards uh, researchers. The researchers are then getting budget for a specific study, taking this money, employing people, doing um, analysis, gathering data, and then publishing the results. That's basically the standard way. And you see here that in the middle, you again have um, research institutions, uh, could also be the uh, DFG in Germany, for example, the, the German research institution, uh, which takes the money and routes it towards universities and researchers. And here you have an intermediary, which is, um, which is needed uh, because somebody needs to rate researchers, somebody needs to select researchers who should be funded. Um, but this intermediary should not go away, of course, but in the future it, uh, we could think of this intermediary, you know, taking funds and channeling it towards researchers, making this, um, this intermediary uh, maybe more efficient, uh, maybe selecting even better researchers, uh, maybe also um, working with less bureaucracy and so on. This could be interesting from an, a DLT perspective, uh, because once again, you have money flowing towards researchers via intermediaries right now. In the future, these intermediaries could be supported by um, DLT networks uh, to basically uh, route the money more efficiently and maybe also exactly to those people who are really the best um, in terms of research. Right now, often it's those people who are doing research um, who have already a very, very good standing, who have trust uh, from a past track record. And uh, this is typically a good indicator of future performance, you know, if somebody did a good job in the past, uh, but not always. And uh, therefore, right now, very often, um, upcoming researchers are not supported adequately uh, because, um, of course, they could not have the time to build the track record to provide trust. And uh, blockchain-based networks, together with more transparency in research, could in the far future, you know, like 10 years from now on, lead to maybe a more uh, efficient, more effective world of research where um, money is basically a channel not based simply on track records, which over dozens of years have generated um, the trust needed to channel money to these researchers. Really fascinating to see the immediate impact blockchain has, but also um, your future outlook. With that, Philip, thank you very much. I'm looking very forward to see where Bloxburg is going and um, if your predictions come true. Thank you very much. Thanks.